Indicators can seem a little bit confusing at first, but what actually is an indicator and how is it used in a titration? And most importantly, how do we select a suitable indicator for a titration? Hi guys, welcome back. I've had to step back a little bit away from this one because I need to make sure that you can see my exciting graph. Look at that exciting graph right there. Because what we're gonna be talking about today is how you select an indicator for a titration. Now, first off, an indicator is a very weak acid and there's loads of types of indicator. It's not clear from the OCR specification, if I'm honest, whether you need to actually know certain indicators off by heart, but the go-to ones are methyl orange and phenolphthalein. You need to know effectively about those and it wouldn't do you any harm to learn their actual uh, equivalence points. So it would give you the idea of where it actually sits on the part of the curve that I'm gonna talk about at the moment. Now, let's say, for example, I've picked my indicator, I've picked something from bromothymol blue all the way to Congo red, I've picked from that selection, and I was about to try and use it for this titration just here. Now, this is a titration of a strong acid with a strong alkali. So, what I'm gonna have for this is my pH changing over time as I add my alkali to my acid solution. And you can see here, at this point, the graph goes vertical. Now, the middle of the vertical bit just there is called the equivalence point. And that vertical bit is vertical on a graph where volume is the x-axis, and so it means that only a tiny amount of volume of NaOH is actually making that transition happen. And in fact, it's around two to three drops in a titration. And so that's why your indicators respond so quickly, because when an indicator has been selected, it's going to fit in and match to the vertical portion of the curve. You've got to have an indicator that has an equivalence range that matches the vertical bit. It's got to sit just inside that. So when you add that one or two or three drops, your solution changes color and lets you know that a neutralization has taken place. Because as you can see, the seven is in the middle of that, which is a neutral solution. So your indicator needs to let you know when you've gone through that vertical bit of the curve and you must only select an indicator that fits inside the limits of that vertical bit of the curve. I don't think you need to memorize the actual numbers for any off by heart, but like I said at the start, it doesn't hurt to learn the methyl orange and the phenolphthalein ones, which were around three to four and eight to 10. So it doesn't do you any harm in learning those numbers. Always check them in a textbook and check with your teachers as well. And I would advise making sure that you are completely aware that the reason they are suitable, for example, in this titration, is that they match that vertical portion of the curve and learn the examples where they are not suitable. For example, I wouldn't use methyl orange in a weak acid strong base titration because the methyl orange is change point, so the point at which it changes color, the pH range it has, does not match the equivalence point of the titration. It sits outside of the vertical portion of the curve. I hope that clears up when and why, what and how an indicator is and how we select a suitable indicator for a titration. I'll leave you to the rest of our playlists. Happy revising.